Hey, we are live. Welcome. I see two people are already on. Great. Nice to have you here, Tay. We're going to give it just a minute or so to let maybe one or two more people join in at least. And then we will get started. Today's focus is going to be on body weight strength training exercises for runners. We're going to make running great again. Uh, stuff you can do at home with no equipment or maybe out as a warm up before your run or a little bit of strength training after a short run uh, to uh, to help get you uh, a little bit more injury resilient uh, and help improve your performance out there on the track or on the road or on the trail. Now, while the focus today is going to be on strength training exercises that are great for runners to do with no equipment, these exercises are fantastic for anybody to do. So don't feel like if you're not a runner or you don't like to run, you're going to be missing out on something here. Uh, these exercises are going to be applicable for anybody. But like I said, especially uh, I think runners are going to find that these are good exercises. If, uh, if you don't have a bottle of water, get some water nearby. Uh, if you would like to have a mat for some floor-based exercises, go ahead and grab a mat right away. Um, otherwise, just uh, hang tight while we wait for maybe another 30 or 45 seconds to see if anybody else decides to join us. And, uh, and we will get started shortly. While we're waiting, does anybody have any questions before we start out? No. Okay. So I hope you have some awesome music playing there to motivate you while you are working out today. Uh, you probably can't hear, but I have an 80s mix playing in the background. I find that especially motivating because I am a child of the 80s. Uh, so we're going to get started in about 20 seconds. We've got two on right now. We're just waiting to see if anybody else is going to join us today. All right. So probably a little bit shorter workout today than what we did yesterday. Um, we're not going to do a whole lot of cardio drilling like we did yesterday or a couple times last week. In today's workout, we're going to be very strength focused. We're going to do a couple warm up exercises, get into some strength, and then we're going to get into a little bit of stretching out. We're going to start with what's called a skateboard drill. And for this, I want you to imagine that you're on a skateboard and I want you to see my feet. So I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. I want you to imagine you're on a skateboard. We're going to slight bend in this knee. We're going to push off push off, like you're pushing off on a skateboard, skateboard exercise. So I'm just sweeping my foot along the floor lightly, not a whole lot of pressure on that moving foot, my right foot. I'm working on balance, obviously. Getting that hip on my grounded leg firing and getting the hip and the knee on my moving leg really firing. Two and one. Now we're going to do the same thing with the other leg. We're going to plant that. Just a real soft bend and push off, push off. Skateboarding. And you never know how challenging this is until you're trying to do it while looking over one shoulder. Looking forward, fantastic. Looking over one shoulder. A little more challenging. Five, four, three, two, just a light drag, and one. We're going to do a little side to side motion. Runners are famous for pretty much just moving in one direction, and that's straight ahead. Uh, often called the sagittal plane, that forward plane of motion. Uh, and they don't do a whole lot of side-to-side -side motion, but that's really important because you can get overdeveloped in those sagittal plane muscles, underdeveloped in those what's called the frontal plane muscles, the ones that move you side-to-side. -side. So we're going to do a little side-to-side -side motion in our warm-up today, 
One, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. Up, 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 up. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Stay light on your feet, up on the balls of your feet. Two and one. Right back into that skater. Here we go. Sweeping that foot along the floor, pushing yourself on the skateboard. Developing that sense of ground connection with the ball of that forward foot. Four, three, two, one. Now we're going to switch off sides. Go for 20. Four, three, two, one. Right into that side to side sagittal plane or a frontal plane motion. One, two, three. One, two, three. Light on your feet. Up on the balls of your feet. Stick that landing. Lift that knee up and slightly across. Three, two, one. Nice. Moving into our next two warm up exercises. We're going to do standard butt kick. If you're working at level one, a little bit lower intensity. If you're a little tired, a little sore, can't jump, we're going to go heels up toward the butt. If you're going level two, a little hot. Bring those heels up toward the butt. Again, level one, level two. Let's go another few seconds. Lifting your knee up, opposite hand to toe. If you watched my virtual workout yesterday, and I hope participated. You may recognize this as contralateral motion, a term which I mentioned yesterday. Reaching the opposite side. Four, three, two, one. Going back into butt kicks, either level one or level two. Now, what helps if you work at that level two is let those arms move naturally, like they would move when you're running. And usually that's going to be a contralateral motion. When you're moving the right leg, Typically, your left arm is going to swing up and out a little bit. A few more seconds. Great. Back into that knee lift, contralateral reach. Trying to get that knee up as high as you can. If you've got a restricted range of motion, you might not be able to get up that high. You might not be able to reach your toe. That's okay. Lift that knee as high as you can. If you can get to your hand, fantastic. 
Can't quite reach. Do what you're able to today. With practice and consistency, that range of motion will improve. Four, three, two, one. Last warm up exercise. We're going to do a speed skater. Here's another side to side frontal plane motion. Similar to that, what we did before. We did these yesterday. We've done them once before in my virtual workouts. A great exercise for getting those hips firing, for getting the lower leg and the knees warmed up, for getting the heart rate going. Four, three, two, one. Take a little breather. Shake those legs out if you need to. We're going to go one more set of those, and then we're going to move on to our main sets of strength exercises. Ready? Here we go. Now, you can make skaters very intense by dropping down a little lower with that knee bend, by going a little wider with that jump. We're just using this as a warm up today. I don't want you to go too hard on this. Four, three, two, one. Now, why, Roy, is it so important for runners to work that side to side motion when they're primarily focused on going forward? Well, I mentioned before. One of the reasons is because with all that forward motion, you're going to get overdeveloped in one plane of motion, underdeveloped in the other. That can contribute to injury, injury risk, I should say. But another reason is that when you lift up one foot off the ground, which is basically what you're doing all the time in running, you're constantly on one foot. When you do that, immediately, these muscles in the side of the hip want to kick in to keep your hip from collapsing out, okay, to keep that hip stable. One of the things we're doing in that side-to-side -side motion is we're really emphasizing those lateral hips so that we can strengthen them up, and you're going to feel a lot more stable on one leg. So there's another really good reason for working that side-to-side, -side, what's called the frontal plane motion. Taking a little quick look at my notes here. And I'm going to grab a drink of water. We're going to do some mat work to start off. So if you want to use a mat for forward, get that mat ready. And we're going to start off with a bridge. A bridge with a little bit of a variation. So I'm going to go up and do a bridge. I'm going to hold. I'm going to try to get nice and straight from my knees down to my hips and my shoulders. I really feel those glutes firing. I can feel a little bit of engagement through the core. I'm going to go a little closer together with my feet, so not a real wide stance. I'm going to alternate, bringing them to those knees up. Now, wherever you want to be with your hands, that's great. If you feel a little unstable side to side, put those hands down to the floor alongside you. Otherwise, wherever is just fine. I prefer to have my hands overhead. It just feels like a more natural position for me here. Really focus on firing those glutes. Squeeze through those glutes as you keep those hips up and march those knees. This is a really great core and glute exercise. Four, three, two, and one. Second exercise. We're going to go three exercise circuit here. I'm going to roll over onto my side. Knees straight. This top leg I'm going to bring in, foot down on the floor. If you can't get this far in, and I know some people's range of motion isn't where they can get this far. That's all right. Just get where you can. We're going to do is we're going to lift that inside leg and down. In and down. Now, 
Take a look at your foot that's going up and down. Chances are you're starting to turn that toe up and in. I want you to keep that toe pointed out toward me. So you're lifting with the inside of your foot. That inside arch of the foot is coming up, not your toe coming up toward the ceiling. Really feel the insides of those legs. Three, two, and one. Same thing on the other side. So I'm going to flip over so I can continue to look at your beaming, smiling faces. I'm going to bring this knee up, foot flat on the floor, lifting that under the inside leg, that leg that's underneath. Trying to keep that toe pointing forward. Now, if you're more comfortable with your head down on, the, on your floor, that's fine. I like to be propped up a little bit. Personal preference there. This is all about that leg, not about what's going on here. Four, three, two, one. Third exercise in this three exercise circuit, we're gonna do a plank, but we're gonna do a little variation on a plank. Here's what we're gonna do. Hands down, feet a little wide apart, hip width or slightly wider. We're gonna go one hand up off the floor and hold. This is a difficult exercise. If this is too tough, Go one hand down and put fingertips. I want you to really focus on keeping that weight on that side. Keeping the hips and the shoulders as stable as you can. This, not okay. We want to be parallel to the floor as we hold this single arm plank. You're going to feel one foot dig down into the floor a little harder. You're going to feel that core and that shoulder really fire. Three, two, and one. Nice. Or do the same thing on the other hand. Take a few breaths, plant those toes, lift those knees up, and hold. You're probably gonna feel more strong on your dominant arm. Perfectly normal. Remember hips and shoulders parallel to the floor, holding as stable as you can. If you need to go fingertips down on the floor, on the other hand, that's okay. If you can get that hand up off the floor, even better. Four, three, two, and one. Nice. Take a little time to reset, get a quick drink of water. We're gonna repeat that bridge with the march and go through that three exercise circuit again. Awfully quiet crowd out there today. I'm not seeing a whole lot of comments. You guys alive out there? Not even Julie's making comments today. All right, on your back, feet down, up into a bridge, get those glutes really engaged. Feet are a little bit close together, so inside hip width and march. March, doing your best to keep those hips from dropping down. Keep those hips as steady and stable as you can. I see a couple comments popping up. I'll check them after I finish these bridges. Glutes engaged. Feel those abs engaged. Two and one. Nice. Let's see what side of Stark your arch we've got coming up. Pretty sore from yesterday. I'm feeling the Mondays on this Tuesday. Boy, I'm glad it wasn't just me. I woke up and I thought it was still Monday. Sideline leg raise. On your side, leg straight, bring that foot in, 
lifting that lower leg up to the inside. Now we're trying to keep that toe pointed forward toward me, not up toward the ceiling. If you got somebody who wants to feed you grapes while you do this, that's awesome. Peeled grapes are the best. But yeah, I'm not gonna beggars can't be choosers, you know. Four, three, two, and one. Right on. Switching sides. Same thing, just in reverse. Remember that toe points forward, lift the arch of that foot up, feel the inside of that thigh really kick in. If you've ever used the, what's called the hip abductor or adductor machine, the one where you squeeze your knees together at the gym, this is working basically those same muscles without equipment. There aren't many exercises that get those hip adductors and isolate them like this. Four, three, two, and one. Single arm plank. If, you're, if, if holding that single arm plank up on the toes is a little challenging, it's okay to go kneeling on that. Try to keep those hips as in line as you can. So kneeling, we're gonna look like this. You're still getting all that ab activity, not getting quite as much through the hips as if you were up on the toes. Again, if you need to put your fingertips down just to help you stabilize a little bit, that's okay. Four, three, two, and one. Switching sides. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nice. Get a quick drink of water. We're going to do that entire three exercise sequence one more time. Starting with the bridge and march. Up and in line, as straight as you can get it from the hips. Or shoulders to the hips to the knees, feet inside hip width, up and down. Trying to keep those hips as level as you can. Four, three, two, one. Now I know you people out there are just dying to know how you can make that exercise more challenging if you want to make that more challenging at home. What you could do is you could hold something weighted in those hips, across those hips. If you've got a couple of light dumbbells, if you've got a weighted bar, if you've got a medicine ball, you can hold that right against your hips or your lower abs. And that'll add to the challenge of keeping those glutes up and those hips in line. Four, three, two, 
one. Other side. Now you might feel a little bit through the obliques on this. Maybe. Now, if you live here in Mayville, don't forget, today is Tuesday. What does that make it? It's Taco Tuesday. Last one. Taco Tuesday. If you're looking for some place to go for lunch, call into Don Ramones. Best Mexican restaurant in Dodge County, in my opinion. And uh, call it an order for pickup. Boy, fantastic food. My favorite lunch there, a number 13. A number 13 from Don Ramones. You can't go wrong. Single arm plank. Feet together. Start with knees on the floor. If you can go, knees off the floor for the single arm plank. Great. If you need to go kneeling, that's okay. I already demonstrated how to do that. I'm going to do this up on my, up on my toes. Five, four, three, two, one. Knees down, switch hands, get ready, and up. Again, if you need to put fingertips down to help you stabilize, that's okay. Four, three, two, and one. Nice. All right. So I'm just going to move this mat off the side and out of the way a little bit. Because our next group of exercises are mostly standing. We've got one of them that we're going to do one down on one knee. So I want to have that mat handy for when I do that kneeling exercise. We're going to start off, and you want to be next to a wall. Now, I don't have a wall here. We've got, I've got walls, but I'm not standing next to a wall. I am standing next to this pole, which I'm going to use for support. So I'm going to stand with my hand against the pole. I'm going to lean in just a little bit. If you don't have a pole, use the wall. Use a really sturdy piece of furniture. But my guess is you've got a wall right there. Did I see another comment pop up? Best Mexican ever, and they're doing to go. Yeah, they are doing to go margaritas right now. I'm not ashamed to admit that I enjoyed one the other night. All right, leaning in, we're gonna do a reverse lunge on this pole. So I'm gonna step back with the inside leg, really brace with that outside leg, push up. Step back, push up. Now. If you can add a little layer to that, bring that knee up in front, working on that hip flexion. You should feel the inside of that leg really work. If you can't do lunges, take a really big step back and a slight bend in that knee and then drive that knee up and forward. Lean into that wall or that pull. But if you can go all the way down into a lunge and bring that knee up, great. Three, two, and one. Nice. Now, I'm going to switch so I can do the other side, but this one I'm going to do lean in here, and then you can get a side view of what I'm doing. I'm leaned in. I'm bracing against this pole or against the wall if you need. So step back and lunge. Up. Step back and lunge. Up. Lunges are a great exercise for anyone, but runners especially. Really working and developing that strength and stability through the quadriceps, those muscles up to the top of the leg that extend the knee, help support the kneecap, and keep it in line. Three. Two, one. 
Second exercise. This is going to look like an odd exercise to you, but I guarantee you it's a good exercise. You're going to be up on the balls of your feet. So my heels are lifted up off the floor. You can see that. My heels are up off the floor. I've got just a real soft knee, so just a real tiny slight bend in the knee, just enough to brace myself, as if I were coming down from a jump. Okay? Are my hands here? Now, I want you to imagine here the last segment of, say, a 5K or a 10K or something, where you're sprinting for that finish. How do we sprint? We pump our arms to generate that momentum for the sprint. So that's what we're doing. We're going to arm pump. We want to try and keep the torso and the hips as stable as you can. I'm up on the balls of my feet. Focusing on keeping a tight core. What does that mean? Imagine somebody's coming to tickle you and you tighten up your abs because you know they're going to tickle you. That's what I want you to think about when you've got a tight core. I've got a slight bounce up on my, the balls of my feet that's coming from that swing from the arms and stop. So when you do that, I want you to feel the shoulders. I want you to feel the core. I want you to feel the hips. I want you to feel that slight bounce up on the balls of your feet. That's a really great, it's called a rotational stability exercise. We're trying to resist rotation as we apply force unevenly in the body. Third exercise in this three exercise circuit, half kneeling, I'm down on one knee, other knees up, I'm gonna reach high overhead, down to the floor on one side, back up on the other. Now, if you can go flat palm down to the floor, great. If you need to go fingertips down to the floor because you can't quite reach or you don't feel stable enough, also okay. What I want you to think about here is touching down in line with the knee. So we're not in front of the knee, we're going to the side. Focus on feeling those obliques. We're trying to develop some stability, some strength through those obliques, which helps support the pelvis and let you drive that power from the upper body down through the hips, into the legs, into the ground. Four, three, controlling both directions. And one, nice. So we're not just plopping down on the floor and coming back up, trying to lower down to the floor with control and then come up. If you feel a little less mobile on one side, like you can't quite reach as far on one side as you could on the other, very normal. Again, with consistency, and practice, that mobility will improve. Once in a while you might lose balance like I just did and plop down on the floor. Four, three, two, one. Nice. Get a quick drink of water if you need it. Find your spot next to the wall. We're going back into that wall leaning lunge. Okay, so you can't hear it, but an awesome song just came on my playlist. So I'm totally chaos right now. Lean in a little bit, slight angle. Press into the floor with this leg. Feel the inside of that thigh engage as you come down and back up. Focusing on engaging through there. Again, if you can't go down into a full lunge because of knee issues, don't do a lunge. Just do a really long step back and then forward. If you saw a comment pop up, I'm going to finish these last couple of lunges. I'm going to check that comment. Two and one. 
I'm a regular walker, not a runner. Do runner walkers experience the same lateral hip issues as runners? Anybody who does any kind of single leg motion can experience those same lateral hip issues. Um, walkers and cyclists included because as soon as you pick up a foot off the ground, those lateral hips do engage. So if you don't keep those in shape, if you don't keep those mobile, especially if you're somebody who does a lot of sitting for work, those hips get worked up. You sit down, they start to cool off and they get used to that shortened position. So the more you can do to keep them strong, to keep them lengthened out, to keep them mobile, the better off you're going to be, the more resistant you're going to be to injury. Let's do that other side with the lunges. Slight lean in, I'm going to step back, knee up. Step back, knee up. Really focusing on engaging the inner part of the thigh on that rounded leg. Now you might feel the inside of the leg on one side and the outside of the hip on the other side. That's pretty normal. Three, two, and one. Arm swings. Again, real soft bend in the knee, up in the balls of your feet, bend in the elbow like you're sprinting that last few hundred yards toward the finish line. You can see it there. You're going to push, push, push. We're going to swing those arms hard. We're going to drive them back hard. We're going to keep the torso as stable as you can. As you drive, 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 up in the balls of your feet. Feel the tightness in that core. Feel those hips work. Feel the backs of the legs kick in. Feel those shoulders work as you drive those arms back, generating that momentum for that final sprint, push, and nice. Back down into a half kneel. Half kneeling, reach up high. Now notice when I go down to the side, I'm trying to keep my arm perpendicular to the floor. So my arm doesn't follow me as I go. My arm is up high. Like you're ready to get a high five from somebody at any time. Fingertips always pointing up toward the ceiling and not toward the opposite wall. Two more on the side. As you keep that reach up overhead, you're going to feel that shoulder work. Getting through some of those shoulder stabilizers, some of those shoulder rotators. Now, Roy, oh Roy, how can I make this exercise more challenging for myself? Two things you can do here. One, hold the weight in that lower hand so you're reaching down toward the floor with a weight. That's going to get those obliques firing a little harder. The other way is hold a weight in that upper hand, which not only gets the obliques to more, not only gets the obliques firing harder, but it also gets that shoulder working a little bit harder. If you're going to try loading it up, loading that up, I recommend starting with loading it down low. If you're going to try loading it up high, go very, very light to start with, maybe five or eight pounds tops, because that's very challenging for the shoulders. And if you have any instability, you're going to feel it. One more time through that circuit of three exercises. Grab a quick drink of water. Lean into your wall or your pole and lunge back. Knee up. Working those hip flexors, getting a little bit through the abs. Feel right there, want to engage as you drive that knee up. Okay. 
We're going to go for three more if you can. Here's three. Here's two. Here's the last one. Switching sides. Same thing. Be in a little bit. Go the inside of that thigh engage. Focus on it. As you come up, on that lunge, you drive that knee up. Fingertips always reaching toward the ceiling, down and up. Controlling in both directions. So five more on this side, five, four, three, two, fingertips up, and one. Down on one side, up on the other, one for 15, count them out. Five more. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nice. Moving into two different exercises to finish up, and then we're going to stretch out a little bit. Now, this first one, lean into your wall, your pull, whatever the support you've got. I'm going to focus this down a little bit so you can see what's going on with my feet. Leaning into your wall or your pull, whatever support you've got. We're just going to lift up on the toes, pull from it, back down. Calf raises. Never underestimate the power of your calves if you're a runner. That's that power in the push off, that pushing off the ball of your foot, that pushing off the toe. That all comes from extension of the ankle. And that comes from a squeeze in the calf muscles. We're going controlled in both directions. Try to keep your whole body in line so your entire body rises up, lowers down. Not that you're doing that. Not bar class, 
This is running. Yeah. Don't tell Carrie I said that, please. Four, three, two, and one. Now the second exercise, this can be a little bit tricky for some people to get a feel for. But here's the thing, lots of people and runners especially work through the calves. They don't work through the muscles of the shin, those tibialis muscles. That's a big mistake because that's where shin splints come from. Weakness in those muscles can cause that dull ache, which a lot of people describe as shin splints. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get back against the wall or my pole or whatever. My hips, my shoulders are connected and stay connected. So your shoulders and your hips are not coming away from that wall. Excuse me, that wall, that support, that pole, whatever. Okay? Feet flat on the floor to start. Lift up the toes, back down. Lift up the toes, back down. So you're rocking back on your heels. The first few of these usually feel pretty good. But after that, it starts to feel cruel. Keep those knees straight, not locked, but straight. Three, two, and one. You should be feeling those right here through the fronts of the shins. Okay. I've had people do those that were complaining of shin splints issues, and after a couple weeks of working on those consistently, a few times a week, those symptoms started to go away. So, very important, I think, for anybody who does running, walking, even cycling, to work on the fronts of those shins. That gives you that power, that lift in the angle. Okay? Let's go back to those calf raises. Lean into your support, uh, your wall or your pole or whatever. Feet start flat on the floor and knees are straight but not locked. Lift those heels up as high as you can get and back down. If you can go up all the way on the toes, fantastic. You're gonna get even more benefit out of this. But the balls of the feet will suffice if you can't get up on your toes. Three, two, and one. Great. Now, if you do those in stocking feet, even better, because you're working all those great muscles through the feet at the same time as you're working those muscles in the calves. Hips, shoulders connected to your wall, your pole, your other form of support. Lift the toes up, back down. Keeping those knees straight, but not locked. When I was young, my friends and I used to have contests to see who could get that muscle in the front of the leg, the one that we're working right now, to stick out the farthest. That sounds pretty silly. This is when we were in like junior high school. But I think that's one of the reasons why I have never gotten shin splints from running. Four, three, Two, one. Shake it out if you need to. We're gonna go one more time for those three exercises and then stretch things out. Lean into your wall, your pull, your other base of support. Feet flat on the floor, straight but not locked in the knees. Up onto the toes or the balls of your feet and back down.
Feel those calves. Feel those muscles through the feet work. Let's try five more here. Five, last set. Four, three, two, and one. Yeah. Back against the wall. Hips and shoulders connected. Straight but not locked out knees. Lift those toes up toward the knees. Lower down nice and easy. Control in both directions. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice. Shake it out a little bit because I know you probably need to. I know I do. And we're going to stretch out a little bit here so I can see your faces. Holding on to your base support, contralateral, right hand, left foot, pull that heel up toward your butt. You're probably going to feel that shin stretch out a little bit here, in addition to the quadricep through the front of the leg. Do you have to have something for support here? Not necessarily, but why, why risk falling down? Falling is not good. I mean, unless you're skydiving, then it's kind of part of the package, I suppose. And if you think about running, really running is control falling. Feel that stretch? Usually with the stretch, you want to hold it 20 or 30 seconds or longer if you feel like it. We're going to switch sides, same thing, other foot. Pull that heel up towards your butt. You might feel those shins stretch out a little bit in, in addition to the quadricep. seconds longer. All right. I'm going to turn my mat to the side so you can get a little better feel for what I'm doing. Move that down a little bit. Feet out in front. I'm going to pull one foot in toward the inside of that thigh. I'm going to reach out toward my toe and pull. It's the modification of that classic hurdler stretch. A much safer modification than what you typically see the hurdlers do. I'm not going to show you because it's not safe. If you can't reach the toe, go for the ankle, hold the ankle. If you can't reach the toe, fantastic. Holding and stretching. You're feeling the stretch underneath this leg. You might feel that stretch down here, through those sides, through the back. We'll hold this a few more seconds. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. If you feel that you have a little bit more restricted movement, a range of motion on one side, but you're not as mobile, not as flexible. Very normal. Very normal. Practice and consistency will lead to improvement. Holding 
Feel that stretch under the leg here, through the hamstring, maybe through the calf. Feel that stretch through the side, through the back, and the out to the side. Feet together, hold your toes, nice tall spine, and pull yourself in a little bit. There you go. Feel that stretch through the insides of the legs all the way up into the hips. Don't want to slouch over with this. Keep that spine as tall as you can and pull yourself forward while keeping that spine lifted and tall. Hold these for a few more seconds. Let's finish up. Kneeling, reach out in front, down into a child's pose. Now, once you're in that child's pose, walk both of your hands off to your left, just one or two hand walk steps. Feel that stretch down your side. So if you're walking your hands toward the left, you're gonna feel that stretch down the right lat, down into the right oblique. Hold that for a few seconds. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but walk the hands over toward the right. Feel that stretch down the right side from the lat, extending down into the obliques. All right. Everybody, nice work today. I hope even if you're not a runner or an aspiring runner, I hope that you feel like you got a lot out of this workout today. It was very focused on lower body and core with a little bit of upper body work, which is pretty much what running is. It's a lot of lower body, a lot of core, especially focused on the hips and the obliques. So, Watch for tomorrow's live streaming workout, which will be posted a little bit later today. Haven't yet decided what it's going to be. We'll see. But keep your eyes open for that. I hope to see you again. Your core work is what I need. Everybody needs work through the core. Thanks, Rachel. Hope you all have a great day. Bye.